So, hi everyone, my name is Robin Bergen. I work on IPFS stuff in general, standards, governance, that kind of stuff. Um, and today I'm just going to talk about, it's a few experiments that I've been playing with uh, to basically improve, in my mind, the hackability of, of IPFS. Basically, the, the background that I'm approaching this um, from is I've been, you know, hacking web stuff professionally since the mid-90s. And so I remember the fun days when, you know, using UTF-8 would like often cause like random characters to show on screen or, you know, when using a templating engine uh, might segfault your server, you know, that kind of stuff. And so, you know, in a good way, IPFS reminds me of those days, but that's not necessarily always a, such a good thing. So the idea is like, how can we, you know, sort of like maybe tweak some of the, of, of the toolbox that we have so that it's less, um, you know, less like the mid 90s and more like, you know, the mid to 2020s or something like that. So, you know, one of the found, found, found foundational parts of, of IPFS is CIDs. CIDs are really bloody awesome. Like, you know, they're, 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 they're a really great idea. They're very, they're very central. Essentially, anything that deals in CIDs can be considered an IPFS system, irrespective of transport, irrespective of, of whatever else happens. Um, and, you know, they're self-describing, that they're, they're built to last, they're built to be extremely solid. However, one of the issues is that CIDs are extremely general and there's a lot of optionality that goes into them. And so you start from this thing that's really the foundational building block and it's already a little bit complicated to, to use, right? Um, I don't know if, if, if many of you know this, but it took about you know, 20, 25 years to properly specify how, you, how URLs work. Um, they, they, didn't, they didn't have a correct syntax, they didn't have a correct parsing algorithm until like the mid, you know, about 2015, 2010, 2015. Um, and when I, when I bring CIDs to the people who were involved in, in that, you know, to, to the people who were involved in that stuff, they go like, oh, fuck no, not again. Um, and so, you know, basically the, the, the idea really uh, is that when you're when when people are working on on these things when people want to build web stuff with ipfs or with the ipfs tool, toolbox we shouldn't be making them think about all these layers right and that's that's a lot of talks have already touched on that the the, the product um panel also talked uh, touched on that it's really important that we figure out ways of making things simple and that means you know removing optionality at times it's important that cids be extensible um, you know, we want them to be last to, to last into the future, but it's poss it's important to be opinionated. Unopinionated technologies tend to fail. They tend to be like engineer focused technologies. So, like if you think of RDF, it's really good at describing everything, which means that it's bad at describing anything in in, in particular, right? And you 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 end up with these super generic things that have become hard to use. And Essentially, in order to not pay the extensibility tax today for tomorrow, we can have the extensibility in the system, but not touch it. And so uh, really here, like this, the, the, the idea of Lucids, um, which are lightweight universal CIDs, is that it, it, they're, they're fully compatible with CIDs. Anything that you have today that parses a CID will parse a Lucid, but they, they remove all the options, right? So it's only V1. Um, only base base 32, um, only two codecs, raw binary and DAX keyboard. People are already complaining about that, and that that's fine. We can we can have these arguments, right? Only Blake three, and people are complaining a lot about that. So I might pick another one. What I want is to have only one. I actually don't really care which one it is. Um, and there are no blocks, and 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 that means there's no varin. So this means that these are basically super simple strings that are super simple to parse, and you don't like have this like matrix of optionality where both ends need to speak like all the bases and all the things, and then you're like, you know, you, you load a thing and you're like, oh, but I, I don't support this hash, et cetera. None of, all of that goes away, right? And so basically this, the idea is to make the foundational layer so simple that people stop thinking about CIDs, which is, which is not the case today. People have to think about CIDs, right? And the idea is like, how many of you have looked at the table.csv, the infamous table.csv? So you know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not seeing a lot of hands, but like, you know, look it up, look it up. You know, it's, it's got the list of like all the stuff that goes into making CIDs, not just CIDs, but you know, um, it's basically the registry for, for the codes and it, it, it looks like that. And so the idea with Lucid is you just scoop out the stuff that, that we actually need um, and, and, you know, shut the door on the rest. So 
Based on this idea of hackability and like I'm making the base layer really simple, I've tried to build a few experiments to show how that kind of like simplified thinking and how like using like really like streamlined, uh, cut out all the optionality stuff can help us build, you know, things that work on the web for people. And so one of the things, you know, one, so this is an anonymous contributor of our community who said like, we need to, fi to, to finally get the fucking basic use cases fucking working. Um, I, you know, I'm not going to say who it is because I, I think that's the person who's actually IFPS. Um, if you if you haven't checked out IFPS.tech on on Blue Sky, you need to. That that is the key to understanding this community. Um, but anyway, like one of the fucking basic use cases that needs to you know be fucking working um, is just like I have files and I want to put them on my, you know, on the internet in an IPFS compatible ways. And I don't want to like, I don't want them to be copied. I don't want to hear about blocks. I don't want to hear about options or profiles or anything like that. I just want it to work. And so what I did, this is a super simple thing. Um, it uses the Caddy web server. You point it to a directory and on the fly, it will dynamically configure the Caddy web server to have like a bunch of subdomains that point to the SIDs, I mean, the, the loose SIDs in this case, and that, that will directly serve that, that thing. And the idea here is that this is not high tech, right? This is a hundred lines of code, um, you know, pretty nicely spaced out, maybe even with some comments. Um, and, and, but the idea here is that you make a website, you have a static thing, uh, static, static resources on that website, and you want those to be IPFS compatible. You can just point to that directory and it will just work. And then that demonstrates the fact that we can integrate IPFS into existing, um, you know, web development uh, toolboxes and approaches in ways that will just like just magically work. I mean, there's no magic. It's just because it's simple, right? Um, and, you know, similarly, um, I, 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 I was wondering like what would happen if we integrated um, IPFS into existing uh, uh, protocols, right? So I picked NOSTA to hack on, uh, not because I enjoy the Bitcoin Nazism politics of NOSTA, uh, but because it's such a simple protocol that it was really easy to build a complete implementation um, and that, that supports that kind of stuff. And so basically I was able to make two relatively simple modifications to, to, to the NOSTA stack, uh, uh, adding CIDs to the metadata and adding um, IPFS support to, to the upload protocol that they have. Um, and out of the box, this just made you know, any um, NOSTA relay into an IPFS gateway for the content hosted by that relay. Um, it's extremely straightforward. I you know, pointed the client at it and it just works, right? If you uh, start attaching, um, uh, you know, cats to your notes, uh, they, they show up um, like, like this um, as, you know, pro fully IPFS things. Again, super simple, very basic. How do I plug, you know, these simple things into, um, in, into existing systems? And, you know, why, why did I pick Nostra? I, I think, well, first it was really easy. This is like 400 lines of code. So that, and that's a base complete implementation, not high quality one, but like complete. Um, but I, I, I was really interested in the architectural approach that NOSTA takes, and they basically have three principles. One, it doesn't rely on a trusted central server, hence it is resilient. And they're like, hey, IPFS is like that too. We like that. that that's good. Two, it's based on cryptographic keys and signatures, so it's tamper-proof. Well, I mean, CIDs, you know, hashes, like very similar. We do that too. It does not rely on P2P techniques, and therefore it works. <sighs> hmm. <laughs> But they have a point, right? The, the, the way in which NOSTA distributes content is actually quite interesting. Every content, every, every client just posts to multiple relays and reads from multiple relays. And that means that you don't necessarily see the entire state of the entire world because there's no notion of an entire world. Um, however, you can figure out where people are posting because some of those messages will be like, hey, I actually use these three relays to post to. And so you can you can basically list you know you can basically start indexing all the relays for who posts where, and that means you can discover where people are posting, and that means where you can find content. And I think you know that's a that's a model that might be interesting in the IPFS world, right? We could take inspiration from that and figure out like, hey, you know, actually we don't really need peer-to-peer -peer 
systems we can gossip to servers um, and, and let the indexing take care of the rest. And really the idea here is that we can switch to a world, or I mean not switch, like you know, the P2P world is cool too, um, but like in order to integrate better into web stacks, we can, we can imagine a world where you can have IPNI indexing of that kind of stuff, and then you basically like publish your IPFS content to your own server, um, and people can like figure out where it is um, pretty easily by, by following that kind of thing. So that, that's why um, you know, I've been focused on, on that kind of experiment. And finally, like a third experiment um, that, that uh, is like directly relevant to tiles, uh, to dApps, um, is tiles. Basically tiles are sort of like a bundle of web content uh, that's meant to be content addressed using a you know, manifest compatible, if you've done web apps, this is like the, basically the same kind of like um, manifest kind of thing. And they do path in the way that is URL compatible, that's web compatible. Um, and they, they actually have MIME types, which a lot of the IPFS stuff doesn't have, and you really need to want to have MIME types on, uh, on the web. And so everything's verified. The, 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 the entry point into the, into the DAP is verified. Every resource is verified. And because it's network locked, uh, you can't inject code. A lot of, um, uh, of, of security systems that I've seen around like, you know, dApps and stuff like that will still allow people to dynamically load stuff over the network, which means that the first thing that a, a, you know, a junior JavaScript developer or sometimes not that junior JavaScript developer will do is load stuff off the internet and say, hey, it's secure, look, the root is verified, but then, then you're loading crap that can arbitrarily vary. Um, I've seen, you know, stuff on like, live websites of like pretty big companies um, that loaded stuff straight off GitHub. And you could like, you know, a, 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 any malicious pull request would just like get you straight into production. Um, and so that, that is the kind of thing that this is meant to avoid. And it, you know, it's really privacy centric, it's, it's embeddable. I'm not saying that this is necessarily the, the, the you know, the, the perfect solution for, for this space, but um, I've built it in such a way that it's meant to reproduce the kind of experience that people have building websites, building like web apps. Uh, and so basically if you point the, the, the tool to your current directory, it will constantly regenerate the tile and refresh your browser. Um, and so even though it's content addressed, you can have that experience of it being, being refreshed dynamically and, 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 and served dynamically because it, it listens to, to updates and, and will keep pointing to it. And as you, you can see, I, I spent a lot of time building a great demo um, uh, with, using, using the traditional uh, IPFS cat. But anyway, uh, speaking of tiles, um, we are, I mean, you can read a whole lot more about, about the idea up there if you, if you have the patience for it. But like, if you're interested in this, in this topic, um, I'm putting together a gathering with hopefully, you know, I, I, not, not everyone on that list is aware that they will be invited to that yet. This is, this is brand new. But the idea is like to basically join forces between these various, um, these various people who have similar ideas to try to you know, basically align on the kind of technology we could use. And you know, the idea is to bring like this, 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 this kind of simplicity to it and do some mischief with, with IPFS um, in that space. And with that, thank you very much for your time. <laughs>